boing. And there's another button. And another cube over there. And this mechanic, this is a fun thing. And it's, it seems to me it was heavily played up in the trailers for this game. And it's really only used here, which is unfortunate. But wee! All the way across. Awesome. Woo okay. And let's go down. Moing. Which opens that right there. Uh no, open that right there. And let's see if I remember properly how to do this. Button. Oh, careful. I don't know if you have to jump through this or not. I don't think you do, actually. Wahoo! Bonk. Wahoo! Alright. Another test chamber accounted for. Oh, in case you got covered in that repulsion gel, here's some advice the lab boys gave me. Do not get covered in the repulsion gel. We haven't entirely nailed down what element it is yet, but I'll tell you this. It's a lively one, and it does not like the human skeleton. Thanks, Cave. I feel better already. So, we're moving on up, moving on out, making progress. All these science spheres are made of asbestos, by the way. Keeps out the rats. Let us know if you feel a shortness of breath, a persistent dry cough, or your heart stopping. Because that's not part of the test. That's asbestos. Good news is the lab boys say the symptoms of asbestos poisoning show a median latency of 44.6 years. So if you're 30 or older, you're laughing. Worst case scenario, you miss out on a few rounds of canasta. Plus, you forwarded the cause of science by three centuries. I punch those numbers into my calculator, it makes a happy face. Yes, for all the uh, rats who are living three miles underground in an abandoned cave. Actually, I wonder how the birds got here, or what they're eating. I guess all the potatoes, basically. Caution, do not lean on railing. They won't let me anyway. Alright, so we need to get up to... where? Next test chamber, which is up there, I think. All of these areas took me the longest time when I was, uh playing this game just because it's really hard to find some of these things. There we go. Okie dokie. I like your style. You make up your own rules just like me. Yeah. Bean counter said I couldn't fire a man just for being in a wheelchair. Did it anyway. Ramps are expensive. While re-implementing the paint mechanics from our student game Tag the Power of Paint, in the context of Portal 2, the biggest change we made was to exclude the paint gun. In Tag, our paint gun allowed the player to paint the environment freely in an abstract outdoor environment, but in our gameplay experiments, that was very difficult to constrain without contrivance in Portal 2's indoor spaces. It also changed the game's pacing significantly, since being able to run at high speed around a level covering everything in paint is a lot more fast-paced, energetic, and often scattershot than Portal's more cerebral gameplay. Perhaps most importantly, there's a certain elegance in the simplicity of manipulating all the game elements using only the Portal gun. Adding a new gun would inherently add complexity and force us to start from square one training the player how to use this new tool instead of focusing on the game's namesake. Instead, we decided to use the established mechanism of the delivery tubes and have players redirect the flow of the paint with their portal guns. This felt like a good compromise. It is an interesting sort of challenge. This is the first uh, puzzle, I guess, where we really have to redirect where the paint goes, or the repulsion gel. Uh, okay. So, first thing we want to do is get up there, I believe. So we're going to a portal here, and a portal here, and go. There we go. Good deal. Let's go 
here. And that paint just keeps running, so we can redirect it wherever we want. Uh, let's do it here now. That's what happens when you get hit with it, by the way. It doesn't actually do any harm to you, at least not that I've been able to figure out. Alright, that's right. So we need to go over there, where it says exit. Which means we need to get a running leap and bounce off gel over here. Um, so we need to get up there so we can do some setting up of things. Ah, no! Oh god, not what I meant to do. There we go. Splat! Alright. Now, I believe, I'll do the same thing up here. Splat. Now we can just go. Boing. Boing. And we need to get the paint over there. Like so. Excellent. And okay, we're gonna need a little bit more here so we can jump down onto it. No. Ah, no, that's not actually what I need to do. I'm a derf. I'm a derf. Don't actually need any gel there. We just need to drop. Oh god. Ah, splat. The coffee we gave you earlier had fluorescent calcium in it, so we can track the neuronal activity in your brain. There's a slight chance the calcium could harden and vitrify your frontal lobe. Anyway, don't stress yourself thinking about it. I'm serious. Visualizing the scenario while under stress. Triggers the reaction. Begs the question of why you told us, Cave. I was happier not knowing. But that's okay. Musically, I just got a headache just as he said that. That's troubling. <sighs> Frickin' cold, man. You're a pain in the butt. Alright, what do we got next here? I think this is a pretty longish chapter, so I may be here for a bit. Now, if you're part of control group Kepler-7, we implanted a tiny microchip about the size of a postcard into your skull. Most likely you've forgotten it's even there. But if it starts vibrating and beeping during this next test, let us know. Because that means it's about to hit 500 degrees, so we're going to need to go ahead and get that out of you pretty fast. Imagine having a vibrating chip in your skull. That would be highly unpleasant. Alright, so this is water, which, uh, we need to drop some gel here, but the water will wash it away wherever it is. So, we're gonna need to switch it off using that thing up there. So, let's get me some paint. Alrighty. Get this all set up first. Oh, come on. Stop that. Stay still. There we go. And bounce. Oh, God. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Almost missed it. Whoops. Okay. So that timer would have run out, and then the water comes back on, and we wouldn't have been able to bounce, and it would have been terrible. I'm telling them, keep your pants on. All right, this next test may involve trace amounts of time travel. So, word of advice, if you meet yourself on the testing track, don't make eye contact. Lab boys tell me that'll wipe out time. Entirely. Forward and backward. So, do both of yourselves a favor and just let that handsome devil go about his business. Woohoo. Yeah, I'm not clear on how this test would actually involve time travel. Ever. But evidently it did at one point. Remember, if a future you tries to warn you about this test, don't listen. Good stuff. Okay, um, we need to go up there. I believe, yes. Um, and we need to do this. Go. 
give ourselves a nice landing area for when we do this. Ah, boing! And we're out in the semi-open air again. Which... Prove important. Well, not really, actually. I'm just rambling. <laughs> um, Alright, so we need to go over there. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, we're gonna need to come flying out of that and hit that, but if there's not some repulsion gel on it, it's going to hurt and not actually take us anywhere useful. So... Yeah, up there. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Did I shoot the right portal? Yep. Yeah. Huzzah! So now we got some gel there. Now we can fling into space. Excellent. Um, now we go where? There? Is that right? I'm not sure if that's right. It is. Huzzah. If you're hearing this, it means you're taking a long time on the catwalk oh, bite me. tests. The lab boys say that might be a fear reaction. You think? I'm no psychiatrist, but coming from a bunch of eggheads who wouldn't recognize the thrill of danger if it walked up and snapped their little pink bras, that sounds like projection. They didn't fly into space, storm a beach, or bring back the gold. No, sir, we did. It's you and me against the world, son. I like your grit. Hustle could use some work, though. Now let's solve this thing. Thanks, Cave. Yeah. I would be perfectly terrified if I was in an environment like this, whether or not I was an astronaut, so bite me. It's also not my fault that you made all of your portal targets like this big. Anyway. One of the things that the student game Tag the Power of Paint didn't allow was painting of other objects, since this would have been too trivial in that game. In Portal 2, however, moving paint around became a puzzle in and of itself, so we began to create puzzles that depended on painting objects. Bouncy boxes and turrets were an obvious choice, and adding this mechanic extended our toolbox to include objects whose basic properties of movement could be changed by the player. Yes. There is an achievement in this game where you're supposed to catch a painted box before it hits the floor. This is the only room in which I can figure out that I could do that, and I've not been able to do it yet. But maybe I'll do it this time. Who knows? Anyway, we need to get that box out of that glass case. Like so. It will kindly do it for us. Ah, there it goes. No. No catching it before it hits the ground for me. Come back here. Come back here. There we go. Alright, let's get that off of you, because it makes you very difficult to work with. There we go. Much better. And sit. Stay. Thank you. That brings that down there. And, uh, to get some... Oh god. Ah! And it's always funny when these start getting the stuff going back and forth between them. Go away! Stop it! No! Ah! <laughs> Not what I meant to do. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, because all we needed to do was get some gel so we could jump up on that. Now, of course, we have to the box off the button again. Like so. Cool. Science isn't about why. It's about why not. Why is so much of our science dangerous? Why not marry safe science if you love it so much? In fact, why not invent a special safety door that won't hit you on the butt on the way out? Because you are fired! Now you test subject, you're doing fine. Yes, you. Box your stuff. Out the front door. Parking lot. Car. Goodbye. 
<laughs> parking lot three miles up above. Have fun with that commute. It takes you as long to get to your office as it does to get to the building. Which is it, we'll find out later, is somewhat remote.